Hello, in this video we're going to prove that this product is a perfect square. So looking at this product, we have the product of a bunch of trigonometric functions and we want to prove that this product is a perfect square. So I have a few other videos on this topic, how to evaluate sums and products of trigonometric functions. The basic idea is that we're going to use complex numbers. So the key identities are e to the power of i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta and e to the power of negative i theta is equal to cosine of theta minus i sine of theta which allows us to evaluate cosine from here. Cosine of theta would be e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by 2 and also cosine of theta is the real part of e to the power of i theta. So this is one of the key uh, identities I'm going to be using. In fact, I'm going to be using the first identity. The other thing is that if you look at the numbers e to the power of 2i pi k over n, k ranges from 1 to n or 0 to n minus 1, then these complex numbers satisfy z to the power of n minus 1 equals 0. So what does that mean? It means z to the power of n minus 1 can be factored as the product of z minus e to the power of 2 pi i k over n, k goes from 1 to n. Now, if I want to evaluate, let's say, product of 2 minus e to the power of 2 pi i k over n, all I'm going to have to do is to substitute z by 2 and I would get 2 to the power of n minus 1. So I'm going to combine these two ideas and in fact we are going to evaluate this product and then we're going to show that in fact this product would have to be a perfect square. So let me first drop the 4 to the power of n minus 1, evaluate this portion and then we're going to multiply by 4 to the power of n minus 2. So the product k equals 1 to n 3 cosine squared k pi over n plus 1. So that's the product that they gave us. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the cosine by um, what we found which is e to the power of i k pi over n plus e to the power of negative i k pi over n divided by 2. So that's cosine of k pi, uh, k pi over n and we square that and we're going to add 1. So let's just square that and see what we get. So we get product k equals 1 to n 3 fourth e to the power of 2i k pi over n plus e to the power of negative 2i k pi over n plus twice the product of these two numbers because they are inverse of each other we're just going to get 2 and then plus 1. Now if we factor 1 fourth from all of these since we have n terms we are going to get 1 over 4 to the power of n the product of 3 e to the power of 2i k pi over n plus 3 e to the power of minus 2i k pi over n and then plus we have a 6 here and a 4 here so we get plus 10. Now I want to kind of factor this one in the form that we had right here. So in, other, in, in order to get it to that form I'm going to have to fa first factor the negative exponents to see what I get. So I get 1 over 4 to the n, I'm going to factor the negative exponents, I'm going to get product of negative e to the power of negative 2i k pi over n, 3 e to the power of 4i k pi over n, plus 3 plus 10 e to the power of 2i k pi over n. And the product goes from 1 to n. Now, let's simplify this side. This side actually can be factored. This is going to be 1 over 4 to the power of n product of e to the power of negative 2i k pi over n times, this can be factored, this is 3 e to the power of 2i k pi over n plus 1 times e to the power of 2i k pi over n plus 3. So if you multiply this we get 10 e to the power of 2i k pi over n and then we get plus 3 and then we get 3 times e to the power of 4i k pi over n. k ranges from 1 to n. Now if we look at the first product that we had and I'll call that perhaps p, so I'm going to call this product here p and I'm going to first for now ignore the 4 to the power of n minus 1. What we're going to get is this p is in fact a positive number. So when I take its absolute value, 
I get the same thing. So the reason I'm going to take the absolute value is to get rid of this portion because absolute value of this is going to be 1. Absolute value of anything of the form e to the power of i theta is going to be 1. So that allows me to simplify this portion. So that would be 1 over 4 to the power of n product of k equals 1 to n 3 e to the power of 2 i k pi over n plus 1 and then e to the power of 2 i k pi over n plus 3. And I gotta have to put an absolute value over that. Now let's turn that into something of the form that we discussed. So just remind, remember that z to the power of n minus 1 is the product of z minus e to the power of 2 i k pi over n. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn these into something minus these quantities. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor a 3 from here and in fact a negative 3 from here and then a negative sign from here so that we can write it down in the form that we want. So this is going to be 1 over 4 to the n product of k equals 1 to n. We are going to factor a negative 3. So if we factor a negative 3, we get negative 1 third minus e to the power of 2 i k pi over n. And then we're going to factor a negative sign from the other one. So if you factor a negative sign, we get negative 3. So that becomes positive. Negative 3 minus e to the power of 2 i k pi over n. And this is all in absolute value. Now if we collect the 3's, we get 3 to the power of n over 4 to the power of n. This guy would be the same as this quantity, uh, except z is replaced by negative one third. So this would be negative one third to the power of n minus one. And this one is the exact same thing as what we have here, except z is replaced by negative three. So we get negative three to the power of n minus one. And then we're going to have to take the absolute value. So the product that they gave us is equal to this, 4 to the power of n minus 2 times the product, which is the quantity that we are trying to show it is a perfect square, is going to be 1 over 4 squared. And then we're going to distribute the 4 to the power of 3 to the power of n here. We get negative 1 to the power of n minus 3 to the power of n times negative 3 to the power of n minus 1. And there's an absolute value over here. Now we're trying to show this is a perfect square. So I'm going to factor negative 1 to the power of n from here. And that would give me 1 over 16. I'm going to keep the absolute value. We get negative 1 to the power of n minus 3 to the power of n. And then times 3 to the power of n minus negative 1 to the power of n. Now, since this is also a negative sign, so I'm going to factor another negative sign, and that would give me 1 over 16, negative 1 to the power of n plus 1, plus 3 to the power of n, and you probably see now why it is a perfect square. So we are almost there. Well, first of all, both of these two terms are the same and positive, so I can take them out, and I can write it down as 1 over 16, 3 to the power of n plus negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 squared. Now 16 is also a perfect square, so I'm going to put it over 4 squared, 3 to the power of n plus negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. Uh, and in order to show this is a perfect square, we'll have to take the numerator and take it mod 4. So if we take that mod 4, 3 is negative 1, so that's negative 1 to the power of n plus negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. And that ends up being 0. So now that this whole thing inside the square uh, is a perfect is a an integer this whole thing is a perfect square and that brings me to the end of this video so if you like this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video